is start out by laying in laying in our, our our background here and the first thing i always start with is the sky color so let me let me ask you a question everybody if you look in your email that i sent you you should have this photograph so if you are able to or if you're familiar with it or if you can see this well enough what do you think of the sky back here do we leave that as white paper or should we put some kind of uh toning to it some kind of pale blue what you can turn your hey, mics on talk i'm thinking pale blue okay anybody else got a feeling one way or the other on it very light very light pale you know very pale extreme okay. pale. <laughs> yep. yep so um I, I i'm i'm okay to go either way i think if we put a little bit of color back in the sky it's going to kind of give it a little more, not overcast, but a little more atmosphere. If we leave that white, it's going to be pretty stark, particularly when we come and put these darks in the trees up here. We want, you see these little sky holes here. Mm -hmm. We want some of them to pop through. And I'll bring that in a little closer where you can see it. We, we're not going to put all of them in, but we want at least eight, 10 or 12 of them along here. And particularly some down in this area here to give that leafy cluster look. Uh, but if it's just pure white popping through there, it's liable to be a little, little too intense. Right. So we're going to start by just washing some blue over the whole scene. And then I'll probably start by, after that, if I get this blue on, I'll take some yellow and pop in down here to start getting this, this greenish cast. So a pale blue, then like a lemon yellow, some kind of your, your cooler, paler yellow. And uh, we'll just get these, this green going down in here. And then depending on how wet the sky is, I may even pop a little bit up here just to get, get some of that feeling going. So let's start with that. I'm like Sue uh, Spencer. I have, uh, I have a phthalo blue and I have an ultramarine blue and I have perylene green. And so those are, you know, I'm going to need to, I, you know, I spend so much money on these Daniel Smith paints for that class that mm -hmm. I, I try to use what I've got right now. But sure. I do, I do kind of need to know in, in, you know, in terminology, which ones are compatible, you know. Okay, okay so the, the phthalo blue and the phthalo green are kind of uh, uh, sister colors, if you will. Okay. Whatever phthalo is, it's some kind of a chemical that drives up the intensity of the color. Oh. All right. It oh. makes it it makes it a very uh, um, intense. Uh, yeah, very intense color. Wh whatever it is, just really amps it up. Okay. So if, if you don't have phthalo green, if you take and put phthalo blue with the yellow, okay, it's going to give you give you kind of a phthalo green because yellow and blue okay. make green. So if you're using a phthalo product like phthalo blue and you add the, the yellow to it, it's going to go kind of give you a phthalo green depending on what yellow you add to it. Okay. Um, and I, I think to, yeah. like I said last week, it's, it's I, may, uh, I don't know if I said it in class or just said it to somebody. I would like to do a uh, just a little class on color mixing sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, like maybe doing a color wheel, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Okay. So uh, I'm going to start. And like I do most times, I'm just going to wet this down. And again, that just kind of lubricates the surface. Of when I apply the paint, it'll allow it to flow freely. When I put this blue on here, it'll probably be a cobalt blue. I don't want to put it on extremely strong. Okay, I want, I want it to be pale. Uh, when I get down to here, I may intensify it a little bit so that it gives me more green. But we'll, we'll just have to see as we go. Okay, so you can see that that's... You know, it's uh, puddling up down here, and I'll just wipe that up there like that. Okay, so um, I've got cobalt here. I'm going to start with that, and I might might grab just a just a hint of that phthalo blue. So those of you that have a little phthalo blue, you can grab it just and just the, just the very tip of your brush in it. Okay, you can't see it, but I want you to see just the very tip right there. 
So you don't want to add too much. If you got you don't have phthalo blue, you got phthalo green, you can put just a little dab of it in there. It, it will work just, just as well. Okay, so I got a handful of brushes here and I gotta mop that up right there. That's all right. All right, so let's just go in here and just that looks pretty dark right now, but it's gonna dry paler and you can see it's because it's so wet, it's still working its way down. And my my tree and everything is gonna be so dark that it's gonna make this look a lot lighter. But even as, as it's working its way down, now I'm just putting clear water over it, clean my brush out, blot it just a little bit. You can see a paper towel right there. And I, you know, again, I'm working vertical, probably you're not gonna be, but you could also, um, you know, take, take, if you're working flat, you could take and uh, just kind of thin it out right above the horizon line there if you want. So the key is to work in a, in a format that is comfortable for you. Okay, so that's going, that's going pretty good. And, and you know, I, I've thought about this because in this scenario here, I'm working pretty fast. Uh, it might be more advantageous for you to to just watch and then of course if I don't mess up the recording we'll have the recording and that way you can absorb maybe more of what I'm doing I'm not telling you you have to do that but it's something you may want to think about okay so this is really coming along nice I've got to get another dry paper towel here so right across the middle where the sky is at, show you, show you again right here, this area right here, that's my light area, and I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter, damp brush again, and just come in there just, just like that. Always keep in mind that tree is going to cover up the vast majority of the sky. Now I got, I'm going to drink that up with the brush this time. You saw me using a paper towel. So there's a couple different ways that you can, you can get that cleaned up. All right. So looking good. I think the sky is going to be nice. It's got a little tinge of uh, blue to it, but not overwhelming. Okay. So I'm getting my lemon yellow out here. Okay, so as I look at my photograph, you see the, the green back in here, this tree shape, the grass, and this back in here, and then a little bit up there. So let's start here where it's safe, where if it runs on me, it's not gonna hurt anything. So right here over the tree trunk and into that tree, I'm just putting, this is just pure lemon yellow, or as pure as I can get, what's in my palette is really tainted. Um, you know, it gets, if it gets any bit of blue in it, it's going to go uh, green on you. So it's, it's got a little bit of green already in it, but not too bad. That's coming out nice. That's, that's working real well. And what you saw there, it, it went a deeper green. That's because there was a puddle of blue right down here along the edge, just like that. And when I hit it with my brush, I picked that up and mixed it with the yellow. That's what was going on. But in this, you, you want a variety of, of shades of green. You don't want just like pure lemon yellow tube green there. See, hopefully you can see how that's bleeding down right here. So it's bluer here. It's just, it's just taking on a really nice appeal to me. Blot that up. Again, if I don't blot that up, as this dries, it's going to start wicking back up and make a water stain there, and I don't want that. Okay, so let me do this right here. Get just a little bit up there. And I'm just looking at my photo here. We'll pop a little more in here, there, and yonder. Okay, this is drying up here, so it's not, it's not moving very much, which is a good thing. 
Okay, and you, I trust you can see that I've left the sky holes here. Uh, I, I purposely put those in so that I can, when I get putting my darks in, I can paint around them and I'll have that there. Okay, last thing I wanna do is I've got some kind of tree shapes right here. They're just like, like that there. Okay, so we're off to a pretty good start. Off to a pretty good start. So I'm gonna take and again, block this up. Just keep an eye on it for a second. These areas up here that are wanting to run, just taking the paper towel and tapping them. Just like that, to get rid of that. Okay, I'm gonna shut the record off and then you can turn your mics on and we can talk about this for a minute if you got any questions, okay? So here we go. Yes, do you want to? Okay, we are recording again. All right. So as I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm figuring what kind of blue is it? And we don't need to make it complex. Uh, this, this horizon here is really just a cobalt. It could be an ultramarine. Uh, I don't have my scrap piece of paper here. I thought, Sidetrack this painting on that New York City painting out in my studio, and I'm in, I'm in the house right now, where it's a little more of a controlled environment. Uh, so anyway, I didn't drag everything in here that I, I probably need. So, but in, anyway, as I saw, I'm looking at this, and just at a glance, we see a blue to me that has a little bit of red in it. So ultramarine's got a lot of red in it. Cobalt's got less amount of red. Uh, so we just pick one that, that pleases you. And one thing that's fairly important is to keep this horizon line pretty well horizontal and, uh, well, just horizontal. You know, in the distance, yes, there's down in Southern Illinois, there's rolling hills and such. But for this, you just really don't see much, much difference in it. So we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna just try to lay this in. Oop, that's way too dark. Lighten it up. I just cleaned my brush and added a little water. That's all you got to do. You notice the horizon is a lot, is, you know, there's almost, almost like a, a soft transition from the blue to this blue in the sky and right at, right at the line. And there's just an atmospheric thing that, that happens. So I've got kind of different, you know, like this right here I put in, I sketched in, uh, just kind of a little concave area where that tree is at. Okay, and I wanna drive this point home right now. You see I'm painting right over that, that bench there and there's a part of us that says, no, we don't want to do that because that bench is, you know, the, the blue is not over the bench. Well, the bench is going to be darker, so it, it just keeps things running smoother. If you paint the lighter colors, we work from light to dark. So this is lighter than the, what the bench is going to be. So just go ahead and cover it up and don't think a thing about it. And now what I'm doing is popping in some, some holes in the, those trees there. Trying to get, just trying to get that feeling. Maybe kick a little more blue in there. Not as intense as I'd like. And I'm holding the picture in my hand, so I paint a little dab or two, and then I, I look at the photo to see what I need. And that's kind of, last week, was it last week we said it looked like a lake. This week it, Looks like a lake out there too, it's all that blue. Okay, so let's go over here. I'm gonna pop a little bit of dark in there. See what happens there. Let's 
So I'm, I'm sitting here studying. There's two ways I can go with this. And while that's drying, let me just set that right up there. So I've got this, bl this bluish um, atmospheric horizon in there. That's a pretty small step, so I almost hate to stop the camera for that that lets you catch up on it. Uh, so I'm thinking, how, how else can I, how, how can I approach this? Because there are multiple layers in these trees. You see these rich darks, like the, the shape of this trunk, the value of the trunk, as it goes into the leaves, if you squint at it, you really don't see the transition. It's just, this is all one big shape right here, even over to here. Okay, so what I can do is just just to kind of start building on the various shapes in those trees in the in the tr the canopy of the trees there. I can take the same blue that I just put here, and I can paint it over the trunk, along the shadow, up, and put the shape of the bench in. Carry it up here. And when I'm doing that, I can leave these sky holes to peek through, not all of them, but some of them, leave some of the, that lemon yellow that I put in, leave it to show up. And so I'll basically, after this step, I will have a cobalt blue tree. But then what I'm, when I develop this dark in the next step, I'm gonna be able to come in and just, just quickly paint those darks over that. And I'll start to have variety. I'll start to get these these subtle shapes of this is an old maple tree, if I remember right. So you got these these heavy leaf boughs that are sticking out, and so I'll be able to do that. So that's what I'm going to do next. Is just take that cobalt blue that I used here. If you're using ultramarine, that's fine. Um, and I'm good now. I'm going to paint that shadow, the bench, and and the foliage up here, and that'll be the first step into getting the tree tree completed in the shadow area. Spencer, right. Spencer yes. can you give me a close up of that bench? I, I could never get the picture on online, so I'm kind of you you want a close up of this or the photo? The photo. Okay. Bench. Because I'm flying blind here. <laughs> the bench. Oh okay. Take it back just a little bit. Okay. That kind of little benchy. Okay. There, there. Is that in focus now for you? Up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's just a real simple structure. Uh huh. It, actually, it's as I'm sitting here looking at it, it's three pipes that are stuck in the ground, and that's the back and the support. And then the pipes, once they hit the seat, they lean back just a little bit to make, to make it a little more comfortable to sit in. Of course, it has the boards attached to it. So. Okay. So this this is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to start right here and just fill in the shape of the bench. Remember, that bench is gonna be a lot darker, almost a black, all this is silhouette. Make a little adjustment to my drawing there. One of my, my um, old pipes just didn't look like it was in quite the right spot. Okay, so pull that over there. Okay, so there's the bench in there. And then if we look underneath there, you can see there's uh, old grass, unmowed grass underneath that. So, you know, we're just, we don't want the, the mowed area to continue underneath it. it. It adds a little more interest if it has a, a taller grass there. Okay, and this, this shadow extending way out here is actually the shadow of that tree because it's such a, it was such a big tree. It's, it was just actually a, a beautiful scene. I really, really loved it. And you know, that's that's what we do. We we paint what we're drawn to. And uh, so you know, you you know, you're working with me as we paint this, and this may or may not be a subject you really love. But hopefully, you you know, as you as you paint this, you're going to learn a technique or an approach that you can go. Oh, well, that's how I would paint. Whatever, whatever it is that I like. And so more than coming away from a class like this with a pretty painting that you did, you're learning principles and you're, and you're learning techniques that will allow you to 
paint the stuff that you really like. Okay, so the tedious stuff is pretty well done. So now I'm going to take and just try to knock this out here real quick. You can see, even though it's blue, it's still starting to really interpret as a, a nice big tree shape. Okay, so here's a little bit of that, ye that yellow that I put in up there. So I'm going to just leave some of that pop out. Not a lot. Same thing down here. Remember, I'm coming over this with a deep, dark color here in a little bit. So this is just kind of setting the values maybe a, a little bit, helping me interpret the shapes. And see, like, like these little light areas right here, um, they just they just break it up. They give, just trying to leave a few sky holes. You, you see this water stain developing down the tree trunk? That doesn't bother me because when I lay that dark color over that, that's just going to serve to give me texture in that tree trunk. And we try to avoid that when we're painting, but uh, a lot of times it can work to your advantage if you know, know what you're looking for. Let me grab my photo here real quick. Okay, so we see how it's coming along. And I'll just keep going, going across there. So what I'm doing right now, that's that area there is that big cutout. It doesn't line up perfectly with it, but it's just reference just to kind of help me get a nice, uh, nice maple tree feel. Starting to get too many sky holes in there. Can you, can you see how it's just a little busy? So I'm going to knock a few of them out of there. Less is more for sure. Okay, knock that out. Break that up a little bit. Okay. There's the, the photo. Get that turned the right way. There's the photo. And then there's the painting. So you see that it's starting to develop quite nicely. It's also wanting to spin that around a little bit. Also wanting to run right here. You can see where that's all clustering down here at the bottom. So I just take the paper towel and blot into it like that. Would you ever just tip it upside down at that point? Oh, I, yeah, I could. Um, something like this, there wouldn't be much purpose in it. But right now it's so tight where I'm working here. Like I've got two tripods that are about two and a half feet apart and I'm standing right up against one of them. So it's just a, it's a little cumbersome for me at this point. So I, I don't do that. Um, but there, you know, I could, I could see me doing that, that on a certain subject. One thing I'm gonna do is put a, a limb cutting across there break this shape up here just a little bit like that okay so one last thing i'll say here before i go and and uh dry this so let me zoom in here for you you see these tree trunks for these trees they're just leafing out real nice you can see uh, over here there's some more so when i get this color mixed up here this dark um, i'm going to take and when I get that put in, I'll grab my rigger brush or a small round that's got a fine point, and I'll just scratch those in real quick. So it will uh, it'll it'll work pretty good. So I'm gonna tap a little bit of yellow into there. I'm just seeing a little something in my photo that I don't, I want to get there. There we go. Works in. Okay, these these kind of lemony green trees right here against that sky are a, a darker value. Like if that sky is like a value of two, one being white 
that sky's about a two. These are probably about a three. So that's where that lemon yellow, if I just brush some of that in there, it'll give me the effect I'm after. It'll be slightly darker and stand out against that sky. Might might pop a little bit in, in over there. The other thing I will probably do is just for some atmosphere and some distance, I'm gonna pull this up where you can see it a little better. Can you see the, it's a little bluer, a little more like an ultramarine or a little intenser blue back there. Okay, in my painting, it's just all one thing or one, one value, one color. It's not near as exciting. So I'll, I'll put that blue in there as well. So I'll start with that. And while I was drawing this, I thought of something else I wanted to talk to you about as well. And that is, this is a very cool, cold picture. And by that, I mean, it's got cool yellows. Lemon yellows are, are kind of a cold color. It's got cool blues in it. And that's all it has. It's got cool yellow, cool blue. And so it, it's um, almost almost un, uncomfortable for me to view. So when we put this darks in, I'm going to incorporate maybe a little bit of orange, a little bit of red into that. And that will warm it up in places. And it'll give us a greater variety and make it a little more exciting. Uh, I hope that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, um, by all, you know, by all means, ask me to clarify it and I'll be happy to. Okay, so just getting that, that atmosphere in there a little bit. Get my finger and soften that a little. Still now what? Go ahead. You're still using cobalt. Yeah. Yep, just cobalt, and I put a little bit of alizarin crimson in it. Now, what I sacrificed there. Now I've got that hard line. If you recall, I was talking about that that soft transition from the cobalt blue to this paler blue sky. So I'm just going to take my damp brush and just run it along the edge there, kind of soften that up a little bit. It's not a not a biggie, but it's it's. Just a little training exercise, maybe. So I thought it, that was a lake back there. Is that a lake? No, it's it's just. Um, so I can get you zoomed in there, where you can see it's just uh, thousands of acres of woodland. You can see that as it gets close to you, it kind of flattens out a little bit, and it's you see the greenish cast. Those are trees. It's, it's uh, you're, down, you're down in Oklahoma, you said, and that's uh, Southern Illinois is just really a lot of rolling hills. And this is far Southern Illinois. Beautiful, beautiful country down there. Okay, so I've added a little bit of interest there, and now I'm going to put these, a uh, little bit of that lemon yellow in here, just to kind of suggest those trees. So we, we have this right here, which is one green, and then I got a different green going here, green yellow, and that's that just adds variety and it's a little more attractive, I think. And then I'm try, just trying to put this in in some tree, leafy, branchy shapes like that. So that's that works pretty good for me. Okay. So I added added a little bit of a warmer blue in there, and then more of that just pure lemon yellow over that. But that it's it, that's kind of leaning to a green because if, if you could see in my palette here, let me let me tip this down. If I can do this without a catastrophe. Maybe I can. Okay, so if you can see right there, that's my lemon yellow. And it has uh, it's just contaminated with a little bit of blue. That happens invariably. There's nothing you can do about that. It's just such a sensitive color that happens to it all the time. So now we're going to start with that dark. And this is where your phthalo comes in. And I'm going to do this one more time. Okay, I want you to see my palette there. 
So I'm going to get some phthalo green right here. Nope, oh, excuse me, that's phthalo turquoise. It's another powerful color. Here's phthalo green. And I need to have more. Let me get a tube and squirt some out. Something else you may want to do. See, I've got a little, uh, like a pencil school pouch here. I keep my paints down in there. And it works pretty good. So here's a phthalo green. Let me kind of compound it for you. Okay, so this is a, this is Windsor Newton's color right here. And it's called Windsor Green. This is a blue shade. Now the Windsor Green is a phthalo green. Some of these brands give it different names, okay? But Windsor Green is a phthalo green. And this is a blue shade, so it leans to blue. I also have a tube that has a yellow shade, so it's gonna lean towards yellow. I typically go with the blue shade. Most of the manufacturers, like this one right here, this is M. Graham. It's just phthalo, phthalo cyanine green. And it is, uh, it's gonna be a bl the blue shade. Okay, so I'm gonna squirt some of that out. And here's the bad thing about the phthalo green, you see there? You get it all over your fingers and you'll have it on your face. You'll have it everywhere before it's all said and done. You can see how, how powerful a color that is right there. So get me a paper towel and try to mop up my hands as best I can. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So let's go back to this. So let's see, there we go. So there's some of that phthalo green. You can see how rich that is. It's a really strong color. Okay, now if I take some alizarin crimson right here, which is like an ox blood color, and I mix that with it, you can see this rich dark that I get right there. It's almost like a black. There you can see. See what it does right there. It's almost like a black color. So that's going to be the basis for my darks in here. But I will take and throw some some other colors like some red or something in there just to get away from just the green and the yellow and the green, yellow, and blue all over it. All right, so I'm going to start right up here in the corner. And I want it to go in, uh, it, you know, I don't want it to be the same value everywhere. So if I get a light area, a, a thin area, that's going to be great. See, like that right there is trying to, trying to be kind of thin. I, and I don't want like this is actually too much of a light area up there. It draws your eye. It's going to pull your eye away from this. So I'm always thinking design. And uh, this design is so important to getting a good painting. Okay, so what I'm laying in here right now is almost a red Matter of fact, that is that is very red looking, but over the blue, it looks violet and it looks dark. And so it's giving me what I want. So I'm getting variety up in my tree without making it um, uh, overly complex, I guess. Okay, so let me pull this in so you can see that. Can you see the greens, the reds, the yellows, the violets popping out in there? They're all dark, they're all subtle, but it's variety and that, that's called a color shift. So it's when it stays the same, va same value, but different colors. And that's what you want.
working pretty good here. Okay, that's working. It's working. So let me keep laying this this darks in here. If I can do it fast enough, then I can actually come back in and blot stuff out. If I can get it get the whole tree done before it dries. But be thinking as you're painting this, you want big shape. You want big tree shape, bench shape, shadow shape, because that's what makes the painting. That's what's going to tell the story. Yeah, see, as I'm looking at this, I and I, I, you know, I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking on my laptop over there. So I think you're seeing what I'm seeing. This is it. Just got a, almost a rainbow of colors in here, but they're just so subtle. They're all the same value, but right here it has a yellowish cast. Here it has more of a reddish cast. Up here it's more of a green. It's bluer over here, and that is just adding so much nice variety to it. So that's what you want. That now I get a little more red here. Okay, now one thing I'm not a huge fan of here. This, even though this is a pretty ragged edge, it's still if I laid a ruler down there, it averaged out. It's pretty well a straight line. So I'm going to put a little bit of a, a sway to it there. Bring some of this down just a little bit so it has a little variety. Have you been using that brush the whole time? On this tree here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a half inch one stroke. Uh, it's a Kalinsky sable, but it, that doesn't matter. Whatever brush, you could be using a round brush if that works good for you. Okay, now I'm going to put some, this is just pure lemon yellow right here in the, the very ends of that, because there's more light that up in, up in the canopy, it's dark, but down here you got light bouncing off the ground and up into the, the lower branches. So you're gonna see a little more color. And if you look in your photograph, I'm not sure if you can see it, but if you look in your photograph right here and over in here, you see some of that, that yellowish color. See, so much about painting like this is about seeing. So I'm putting a little bit of that lemon yellow up, up in there, just to suggest a, you know, a bow or something like that. Okay. Now the, the last thing I see too, still too many sky holes here. This big shape is broken up too much. So I'm just gonna fill in some of those with the dark. Get a little more red, a little more of that phthalo green and come in here just like that. And I've still got to carry it down the tree trunk too. But by stopping in the tree trunk, if I have a jagged line because it's dried there, I can incorporate that into the bark that's on the tree. Put a little more dark up here at the top. Okay, now I'm gonna carry this down. Make some adjustments to the shape of that trunk. Just a little bit. Okay, same brush. I just, I rolled it on its edge rather than having it flat like that. I just rolled it on its edge, but I think I'm going to switch brushes. I'll go with a round. I'll go with this one right here because that is going to allow me to detail a little bit, just a little bit better. 
So you can see that I'm painting with right there. Just excuse me while I mix up a little bit more dark. Okay, so you know I I could paint just like that if I want to, and I will on this bench here. See, it works great for that. Okay, but for areas like this, I lay the brush on a side and just tap it in there. And then that starts to give me texture and various shapes and just kind of keeps it a little more organic. There's a little, little bit of dry brush there. Okay, and I'll get that grass underneath there. I'll just use the very point of the brush. Going back now for the shadow, going back on the side of it. Carry that up, and that just thins out to almost nothing up there. And I'm not sure how complex you want me to make it for you, but at this point now, as I look at the photograph, right here at the edge of it, you probably, I don't think you can see it in my photo, but it's actually like, like this cobalt blue. There's a, a evidence of that right there. So I just grabbed some cobalt blue and right at the bottom I'm going to put a, a little uh, touch of that, a suggestion if you will. It won't be strong but it'll be there. Okay. All right. Park bench. Picture is not too far from being done. So it doesn't have to be black. Matter of fact, you don't want it to be black. You want it to be color, you know, have color in these darks. But you do want enough contrast so that silhouette really pops out. And I think we've achieved that. Pull this grass up just a little higher. I think it it needs it because we had almost a symmetry going on there that I did not like. Okay, so you remember me talking about the the little limbs that you see in here? Same brush. It's got a nice tip to it right there. So I can come in. I can just pop those in pretty easy. There's grass growing right here, so I'm going to come up above the grass. Just kind of suggest them. You know, they look dark in the photo, but you're better off to do them in kind of a, a muted gray, I guess. You can use this dark that's here, but add a little bit of water to it. Otherwise, they're going to stand out too much. And just kind of casually, loosely throw them in there. That brush there is almost a, a little thick, so I'm gonna grab a little smaller brush right there so I can control it a little bit better. And then just, again, just a suggestion of them. Some back here. bit of dark shapes on this side. Put some grass growing around that just to give it some interest because we had this hard line coming down the tree and a hard line curve and then this is a pretty hard line here and it's just not working in my, my opinion. Okay. So there is that. Now, I want to take 
and do a little bit in this foreground here. I'm not happy with that. It's just pretty pale. It needs a little color. So I'm going to grab my half inch flat brush again. And as I look at this, you can see there's kind of bluish cast here and a more of a yellow cast here. So I'm just going to take and brush some some yellow in here and then throw a little blue in just to bring the colors up in that a little bit. It's too washed out here. I'll probably put a little bit back in here as well. And then um, maybe do a little bit of splattering and we could probably could get away with calling this picture done. So again, I'm going back to that lemon yellow. We can just take and brush that in to enhance the colors just a little bit. It needs a little help. I'm going to try. This may not be a wise maneuver. So you can watch me make the mistake and and you can decide if it's something you want to try. But I'm getting uh, a color here. It's called quinacridone gold. It's basically just a warmer yellow. I'm going to put a little bit of that in there just to see what it does. Don't run out and buy that color if you don't have it. But it, you can see, hopefully, that that just kind of warmed it up a little bit. So I'm mixing that quinacridone gold with that lemon yellow. There you see, that's more what quinacridone gold looks like, kind of earthy yellow. And it, you know, at, at this stage, I, I just say it really doesn't matter. You're, you're just trying to make this exciting and interesting. So if this color is not found in your photograph, it doesn't matter. It's just, does it work? Does it add interest? If you were able to say yes to that, then it, then it worked for you. Okay, so this is really nice here. Let me throw a little cobalt into that. Just to try to get, again, a little, a little dab of variety going. I'm going up the slope of the hill. You may be tempted to go horizontal, but that hill is going like that. And so keep your brush strokes going that way. All right, let's take a little more of that lemon yellow and that quinacridone gold and just populate this, this tree area back here with it. Again, just warming it up. like that. That little run right there, not ideal, but it, it happens and it's not going to hurt us. And I seem to be doing this quite a bit here lately, is do some splattering in there. When you've got grass like that, it adds a lot of interest uh, that you can't get any other way. So I'm going to Quickly put a little bit of splattering in there. And I've showed you this before. The brush that you use, um, whether it's a, a big, big flat brush like that or whether it's a round brush, will determine what kind of splatter you get. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a little bit of phthalo green. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the lizard crimson to make that dark color. I'm gonna cut it with just a little bit of what this yellow that's on my palette. Okay, so this big brush will give me a larger splatter than the smaller brush will. So I'm gonna start with the big one and we'll see what it does. And I'm splattering into some wet areas and into some dry, so that's gonna give me a, a variety there as well. Yeah, rinse that out. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of cobalt blue. You can really put almost any, any color you've used anywhere in the painting you can use to splatter with. Uh, I'm going to try a little cobalt here. Oops, that one's pretty heavy there. Okay. Be careful with that. The very best brush I've seen is my rigger. It's a Sterling Edwards number six rigger brush. And it, you can just hold it and just tap it 
and it just puts the perfect amount out. I don't have that in here with me, or I, I would use it for you. So, okay, not ideal splattering, but it's it's still going to work. It, it breaks up the shape, adds some interest, and ties it together with the other hopscotch shapes that are around there. So, I'm gonna put just a hair more blue right in there. That's just a pure cobalt. And I'm down from the horizon a little ways. And I wet it just a little bit, just to kind of beef it up a little. Okay. All right. I am going to do one last blot here along the bottom. And then call that done. A little blot right up here that needs picked up. A bubble. There we go. Another one right there.